going to be tough, but now we are ready to jump right into it. It's game number two here of our top eight match. If Logan Johnson wins this, not only will he get his revenge from that YCS finals, he will be one win away from booking his ticket to Seattle for the world championship. And going first and starting with Nightmare Throne is huge. Now, we mentioned, obviously, Tenpai wants to go second. I don't think anything wants to go second into Ubel. Like, actually. Mm -hmm. I think there's just going to just be such a strong field. Because even the DDD Wave King High Caesar deals with a lot of uh, the Tenpai Dragon's effects being able to... Ah, yes, my boys. YT Dan, back at it again with a brand new video for you. And this video, my boys, is going to be another continuation of the combination that I'm laying down this month. For your boy Augustus has many blessings for his people. Boys, here we go. Now, basically, if you haven't seen this before, again, I refer you to check out my previous stream where I go in depth to this little framework that I have created here. You know, basically, um, it's if you don't know what it is, this is what the mind of God looks like according to some religions. Basically, this is the mind of a duelist according to YT Dan. And what I did was recontextualize this framework to show um, what it is that's happening in the mind of a duelist as the duel is going on, and then also show the um, key factors that are um, game changers that help to build tempo to help win duels. So primarily the reason why I started off with the Ubel duel is because it was the final duel in my 10 duels. And as I told you, the Eldridge back road stuff made me consider the AI's um, suggestion following the gold duels, which was to add DD Crow and twin twisters um over the course of the games i found dd crow was not my flavor and i ended up having three twin twisters and i took out cards like forbidden droplet and impermanence and basically reduced those cards to two and put twin twisters up to three so by adding twin twisters um to three and then also having the three lightning storms and one harvey's feather duster has a greater chance of opening with back row removal going second and i thought that was going to be highly relevant as i climbed in the ranks because a lot of people tended to want to go first but their go first strategy was to set back row so we accommodated that by listening to our ai and that gave us an advantage so we're already lighting up one node on our chart here now as we continue um our opponent has not given us any information and neither have I, I don't have any hand traps. My opponent doesn't have any hand traps. So right now our minds are veiled and there's a mystery. You know, what's going on in the mind of that opponent? We're both thinking. Um, right now our wills are strong because I'm holding my cards close to the chest, literally, and so is he. And uh, also um, right now our imaginations are very curious. We're very, we're very much wondering what's going on on both sides me more suspicious of him setting one and not passing from my perspective i'm taking his back row as live and his hand as live as well but i would typically say in the hand i would expect two cards live but um you know you definitely want to count them all as live you know but let the cards in the gameplay um suss out if that's true or not so let's continue so as I draw, you know, I start out with Twin Twisters. What I love about Tri Brigade is Twin Twister and also Forbidden Droplets both cause you to discard a card. And, you know, that works perfect with Tri Brigade. And um, that's honestly one of the reasons why I love running it because Tri Brigade has a lot of good two card combos that will help lead me into combo lines that will get me closer to executing my uh, win condition. So now I've just revealed that I am playing Tri Brigade and he just revealed what he's on and it is you bail. So right now, both of our imaginations are fired up. Um, both of our willpowers are strong. Um, definitely, I would say at this stage though, I am taking the advantage as I'm discarding, destroying his only option to special summon a monster. And then also I'm gonna be activating my combo line. So now, 
I am fully getting ready to go and I have the tri brigade section activated and I am moving into my line. So um, that being said, I'm gaining momentum here. I have tempo control. I am in control. And typically, as, as you know, object in motion stays in motion. So if I can maintain this level of tempo, then I will not lose this duel. There's no way I can lose this duel as long as I maintain tempo. So because I'm on the second turn, typically what you want to do is reduce your opponent's life points to zero. But instead of reducing my opponent's life points to zero, I have assessed my opponent's deck and it is the Ubel deck. Um, I know this deck because I've already done my meta research. Um, by banishing two cards from the graveyard, I'm about to access the Gladiator B side of archetype. So archetype A and archetype B. Um, I am on my go second strategy and I am in my go second strategy executing my win condition. Um, tip, uh, right now, because I utilize the power of the AI. So right now at this stage, I am 99% into my win condition. I, my tempo control right now is at 99%. So when I attack right here, we're at a hundred percent because our opponent has already indicated that he has no response after we went through all of our lines. And then obviously by destroying the back row, because we had the addition of the twin twisters, now we're actually able to go into our gladiator beast one card combo. And then here we go. Contact fuse and then bring out the Domitianus link to into the test panther panther's effect for comeback comeback for the editor editor for gazaris panther send it back for questus to bring back the comeback then link off both for the uh ip no for sp because okay and the reason why we had to do sp is because SP, you know, points to the sides and it's good to put it down here at the bottom first. Um, and then also we're going to do it again and then we're going to activate and we're going to summon our Herc. Then I'm going to normal summon and go on the IP. Now I didn't have to normal and go on the IP, but I wanted to normal go on the IP so that I could potentially go into Apollosa because I know that this is you bail. And after I negate and destroy his uh, hand trap, you bail, um, then I'm gonna have to do something else with whatever he summons. But also what's interesting too, um, I didn't mention it uh, because I was already, as I mentioned, I was confident um, in my knowledge, even reciting it to you. I was traveling back to those moments. I was confident in my, in my attack, but one thing I forgot to, to uh, tell you about is is obviously if he was expecting to activate the U Bell card in his hand as a hand trap, he couldn't do it due to Dragasis's, um effect, which prevents any cards being activated. So it delayed his response. And now because of that delay, which is unique to me, another imagination, you know, another intellect thing, as I mentioned, if you didn't know this, the imagination is the most powerful weapon any duelist can have. So because I'm using that, I'm wielding it against this opponent, I've been able to assemble this entire board to contend with them. I also got called by the grave, which I could set, but I chose to keep it in the hand just in case, um, you know, something got crazy. So now, um, here we go. He uh, couldn't do anything, and he's past his turn. He gives it to me. So I'm just going to go to end him. And here it is from the hand spirit of you bail, which as I mentioned before, is pretty obvious because at this stage, you know, you know, this is obvious. Um, but when he activates spirit of you bail, this is already too late. As you can see my entire tree of life, the mind of the duelist, the mind of the God of the duelist that I am is fully illuminated and every node is activated. 
I am currently in wind condition mode and I'm attacking and my tempo is way too high. So there's no way he's going to be able to get this game unless I drop it, especially in this phase. Now I'm attacking into him and he activates this effect. And then we're going to use Domitianus to negate and destroy it, as I mentioned. But because we're in the battle phase, we're not going to be able to go into Apollosa, but that's okay because we got SP. But also, we've got Call by the Grave for this card because remember we held it? Now we're going to Call by the Grave and give it a banish and then there's not going to be any more responses after that, obviously. And because of that, that's just an easy win. Now, again, what I like about this the most, what I find most interesting is that, as I showed you before, it's all about tempo. And that's where the true control is. And you got to find out how to gain tempo by attaching yourself to the mind of the duelist. So my boys, check out that live stream to get more information. And I'll catch you on my next video.